Hello, it's Nigel Bowden here. Uh, just wanted to put together a quick video uh, talking about how to burn uh, WLANPI images. It's a question I get asked uh, quite regularly, so I thought it'd be worth putting together a quick uh, a practical demonstration of how we actually burn the image onto WLANPI SD card. Um, at the moment, we operate a model whereby every time we release new uh, software and we add uh, bug fixes and uh, new code that we've developed uh, we have to supply uh, all of the code as a single image which you burn onto the SD card which resides in the WLAN Pi. Uh, we're hoping to move to a um, package update model in the future but at the moment we're, we're, uh, we're, we're limited to uh, burning the whole image each time. Uh, one of the side effects of this you need to be aware of when you're actually updating the image is that it, it does actually erase the entire SD card and you start again so if you've got any existing files on there that you want to preserve on your existing WLAN Pi you're best to copy those off uh, before you start this process, keep them saved somewhere and then when you've uh, burnt the image you can uh, tra um, transfer them back onto your WLAN Pi uh, so you've got them nice and safe. Um, so I'm actually going to run through as I say a practical demonstration of how to do this. It's fairly straightforward once you've done it once or twice but uh, first time if you've not done it before it can be a little bit worrying that you know something's going to go wrong and, and you're going to have difficulties and, and brick your WLAN Pi or something. So. Um, Working through it step by step, first thing you need to do is go to the uh, GitHub site, uh, which you can see on screen, uh, which is the uh, github.com forward slash WLAN dash pi. You can see the URL at the top there, and I shall put that in the uh, notes with this video. Uh, when you actually go to the site, you see the, the page you can see um, uh, on, on screen now, and there are a number of repositories which have each got a title here. You can see you've got W Console, WLAN Pi Hotspot, Profile. These are all different packages which reside on the um, on the WLAN Pi, but you don't need to worry about any of those. The one that you're interested in is the one that's called WLAN Pi, and you can see it says it's a WLAN Pi release repository, and this is where we put um, the single image file which you're going to need to burn onto the SD card. So if we click onto WLAN Pi, and you can see now we're within the repository, and there's a little README uh, at the top there, which just gives you a little bit of information about the WLAN Pi. But the thing we're really interested in is this link here, which is uh, releases. Uh, and you can see we've got 25 releases listed at the moment. So I'll click on that. And then if you scroll down here, you can see each of the um, release images uh, going back in time with the most recent one at the top. So the one I'm interested in is the WLAN Pi 1.9.0. Uh, which came out fairly recently and what you're interested in, apart from we've got all these nice release notes and a few of the useful bits and pieces of information, what you're interested in is the assets at the bottom here and at the bottom of each of these release, releases you'll see this little assets section and what you're interested in is this single zip file here what you do, you actually click uh, on that and download it onto your uh, local laptop. You can see it's fairly large, 1.74 gig this one, so it's fairly sizable. It'll take a while to download depending on the speed of your uh, internet connection. But once you've downloaded that, you know that's the file that we're going to use to actually burn our SD card. So I've actually already um, downloaded that. Uh, I should have that in my downloads folder here. So you can see here I've downloaded it already and it's uh, you can see it's just sat there in my downloads folder ready to go so so we've got that that's the first thing that we need um, and then what we're actually going to do as I say is burn this onto the SD card of the WLAN Pi itself now uh, the, the package that we tend to use uh, myself and Jerry for doing this is um, a package called Belina uh, Etcher which you can see on screen here um, it's actually a very nice piece of software it's free I think if I go back to my browser I've actually got here we go, we've actually got the Bellina uh, homepage here. You can see the URL at the top there. But I'm sure a, uh, a Google search will uh, soon find it for you. And if we have a look down here on the drop down, we've got versions for Windows, Mac OS, and Linux. Uh, and we tend to use the Windows and Mac OS, as that seems to be what most of our users uh, tend to use. Uh, so, as I say, you can download that for free from that site, and uh, that, uh, as I say, I've used that quite a lot, and that, that works pretty well. So, what we actually do is just a three-stage process. We select the image, which is the image we've just uh, downloaded, then we select our target, which is going to be our SD card, which we'll get to in a moment, and then we just flash. It's really easy, three-stage, click, 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 and away you go, and it does it all automatically for you. So, what I'm going to do now is just share a bit more of my desktop. Here we go. I've actually um, got myself a WLAN Pi 
here which is live at the moment if I click on that you can see the screen saver just kicked in there uh, but uh, you can see that's a live box uh, what I've actually got here is a USB hub um, this is just so you can actually see what I'm doing uh, on camera, uh, it would be very difficult to do if I used the usual USB slot on the side of my laptop, but that's what I would normally do. Um, I've got the WLAMP I, uh, which has got its wireless NIC card in, you don't need that. Um, and the other thing that I've got is a couple of um, adapters. This one's a Transcend, whoops, upside down. Transcend, and what it's actually got, you've obviously got a USB. Um, uh, plug uh, to a connector to, to plug into your laptop and what you've actually got here is a couple of slots on the side one is for a standard size SD module at the top and at the bottom we've got the micro SD which is the one we're interested in because what we're actually going to do we're going to take the S micro SD card out of the WLAMP I pop it into here put this into our laptop and then burn the image so it's just pretty straightforward stuff um, just as an alternative I recently bought a, a new um, Raspberry Pi uh, kit and funny enough it came with this very nice little micro SD adapter so this is an alternative when you probably get from Amazon or somewhere and you can see it's got the um, uh, a standard sort of USB uh, connector sorry I'm having trouble getting the focus working on this I don't know if this helps there we go and then at the bottom underneath you've got an additional little slot here which is where you slot your micro SD so you put your micro SD into there and then just plug that into the USB uh, socket of your laptop and it does the same job as one of these which is uh, which is quite nice okay so anyway let's 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 run through the process so first thing I'm going to do power off the WLAMP I and then in all of the WLAMP I models you've got this little um, slot here where we've got the micro SD card and the way you get these out is just literally push it it pops out it's got a little spring loaded action and you can see we've got the micro SD card there a little bit out of focus and the autofocus works too well on here the other alternative you've got if you've got one of the silver ones it's exactly the same process so whether it's a silver or the black model of WLAMP I it's exactly the same you've just got a single slot and if you've got one of the newer um, uh, WLAMP I's that's been put into a case so we've got a, w, a standard WLAMP I here but it's put into this very nice case which uh, gives you a nice handheld form factor uh, and, and, and the, um, the uh, WLAMP card is inside there the uh, the wireless NIC card but what you have to do is just turn it over like this and you've got access to the micro SD here and again you literally just it's difficult to demonstrate but give it a push and it pops out and then you can just pull the card out like that and uh, away you go you can just do the same operation I'm about to do I'll just pop that back in there for now when you put them back in you literally just push it and you just push it until you feel the a bit of resistance from the spring and you hear it click into place okay so we've got our SD card and we're ready to go so we're going to actually take this card now put it into our uh, little adapter here the micro SD adapter and this will inevitably the wrong, be the wrong way up let me just nope <laughs> put it the right way up there we go that clicks in there so we've got the micro SD into our adapter, pop that into the USB hub there, but this would normally be the USB on the side of your laptop. And you can see I've had a little message pop up here now, so I'll sort of cancel that one out. The uh, the laptop's obviously detected that the uh, new card uh, with the micro SD card in there. And so if we now look at uh, the Etcher program, you can see uh, we've got select image. So what I'll do is select oh I've lost my download hang on a second I just gotta find my download section here downloads and I'll just select so you just select the zip file you don't unzip it do anything with it you literally just select the zip file that you uh, that you downloaded hit open and you can see now that the uh, WLAMP I image is selected there in the middle here this is where you select your destination that you're going to burn I've used this program a lot and it always selects the micro USB 
uh, that I've inserted. You obviously need to double check this. I mean, if this did for some reason select another drive on your laptop, then obviously flashing that would be uh, could be fairly disastrous. So always double check to make sure this is the um, the device that you want to uh, burn the uh, image onto. You could hit change if you wanted to do that. As I say, I've used this program a lot. Every time it just selects the um, micro SD that I've plugged in, and we literally boom hit flash. It says it's starting. I just get a little prompt there. Just had a little prompt from the command processor to say that it wanted to start. And I clicked OK. And you can see now it's actually running through the flashing process. And what it will actually do now, it'll uh, run through. It, it takes sort of five, ten minutes maybe. Uh, it'll it, it's actually flashing the image onto the micro SD card. You got a little ETA at the bottom here saying about five minutes. Once it's actually done the flashing, it will also then do a verification. Uh, so this process takes, as I say, probably about five to ten minutes, depending on the speed of your card and your laptop, etc. So what I'm going to do now is just actually pause this uh, session and then I'll come back when this uh, has completely written and I'll show you what we actually uh, what we actually do then just to pop this back into the wheel Empire and get things going again okay so I'll see you in a few moments right okay so I'll just uh, just hit the pause button again and you just caught the tail end there of the uh, validation process and uh, in total, looking at my timer, that took about eight minutes in total um, from start to finish, from hitting the start button uh, for flash uh, and to actually completing. So uh, that, that's all there is to it. Uh, it's literally ready now for us to just um, unplug the uh, the SD card from the USB and, uh, and plug it back in. I, I quite like to just do the little safely remove operation at the at the in the system tray there just do eject there we go probably won't make too much difference uh, but uh, I always like to do that just in case so now just looking back to uh, our USB hub here I'm going to unplug a USB to micro SD adapter there I'm going to pull out the micro SD card again I'm going to pop this now back into our little micro SD slot on the uh, WLAMP high. You have to be very careful here because there is actually on some of the models there's a there's a chance that you can actually stick the micro SD card uh, between the chassis and the top of the uh, the little micro SD um, socket and it falls inside the chassis which is really annoying you have to take these screws out take the whole thing apart to get it out. So I always, I'm always very very gently put it back in and just make sure there we go give it a push till it clicks you feel a little spring resistance when it's in there so that's now back uh, in position I don't know how well you can see that on the camera there we go that's back in position so I'm going to put the, put the power back on just watch what happens it literally should just be a question of power it on it takes about 30 to 40 seconds for the um, boot sequence uh, to actually complete so uh, I've reapplied the power, so we're literally just going to wait now for this. When when it's actually finished booting, you will see uh, the little familiar WLAN Pro's logo pop up. Um, if you just want to check that something is happening, you can normally have a look. Oh, there we go. It's just popped up now. But you can normally have a look, and you see some red lights and some activity going on inside the chassis there. So now it's popped up. I don't know how well you can see that. Oh, how good the autofocus is, but you can see now it's shown WLAMP High version 1.9 and uh, it's ready to go. I mean, if I press any of the buttons, you get the usual um, operation that we would expect from the WLAMP High. So that's all there is to it. It's fairly straightforward. As I say, once you've done it once or twice, uh, it, it's, it's nothing too onerous at all. And uh, it's about a 10 minute operation from start to finish when you've got all the right bits and pieces uh, to, to burn. Uh, your very own WLAMP high image. Well, I hope this has been useful. Uh, if you've got any questions, you can always catch me on Twitter. Uh, I'm uh, uh, Wi-Fi Nigel on Twitter. 
ask you can always use the hashtag WLampire as well and usually one of us will be uh, monitoring that hashtag and we'll see if there's any sort of questions that you've gotten. Uh, one of the team will generally get back to you and give, a, give you a bit of a hand if you're having any sort of problem. Okay well I hope this has been useful and uh, thanks for uh, uh, sitting through it and uh, as I say hope you, you've uh, learned how to do, uh, how to burn your WLampire image and uh, you'll be quite confident to have a go next time we release a new image uh, and stay up to date with the latest and greatest um, offerings that we've got for the WLampire. Thanks a lot, I'll see you again soon. Bye.